Hey, hello, this is one of those videos that just doesn't want to be made, but we're going to make it. All right, I am spray planning. I have had nothing but really weird weather, unpredictable weather, days I should have sprayed, could have sprayed, days I thought I'd spray and didn't spray. It's been like that. What I've got is the uh, a perfect storm. I've got insects, really heavy aphids on me now. Uh, potato leaf hoppers reported in Pennsylvania. It's going to be on me in no time. And I have prime fungal conditions. Probably good for fire blight too. I have to crunch the numbers. We've had heat. Uh, I have, I'm, I'm looking at the weather underground here. You can see this uh, today, thunder boomers. Tomorrow, thunder boomers. Can't do anything about it. In no sense putting anything on. I'm going to just wash it off. I got a cool drying day. And you'll look at the wind speeds down here on the bottom. It's going to get a little blustery, but it's going to dry them off. And maybe that in the evening, maybe after dark, I'll be able to get on a spray. And that's good because that'll give it a day to set, you know, and, and do what it needs to do. Um, what I do is I make up a little prescription card for myself. And this is my loader card. And it keeps me from, if I'm loading like really early in the morning, I'm a little groggy. So it's sort of like a recipe. It's me proof, almost idiot proof. Um, but I want to go through some of the things I have to consider while I'm setting up to spray. Alt-Tab, Alt-Tab, Alt-Tab. Okay, one of the ingredients I'm going to put in is Carbaryl, also known as 7. I'm putting in the 7 there to show some love for the aphids and the, um, the hoppers. Um, I know that I will hurt beneficials, but... They're not taking care of my hoppers and they're not taking care of my aphids. So I, I, I can't, it's just, I don't like to spray, but I've got a pressure that's, it's damaging the trees. And these are young trees and the aphids are sucking the life out of the new growth. Can't have it. I need to keep the trees going. So this is me competing with natural selection. I'm keeping the spray in the orchard. Carbaryl is very toxic to bees. Um, it's worse for bees than neonicotides, but neonics have gotten all the press. So I'm going to be using carbaryl and I'll be talking to my neighbors and hopefully being using a neonic next year. The neonic in a single spray will take care of the aphids and any sucking pests on the trees and it won't hurt anything that doesn't suck on the tree, which would be bees. Okay, um, looking at the label, I, I skim them and I highlight them when I can. So when the first thing is what PPE do I need to wear? Well, this is full kit for me then, okay? So hot and muggy weather, cover up, respirator, okay? But I highlight that to make sure I do. I always wear chemical resistant gloves, always, always. But in this case, it's more cover, um, the chemical resistance in the hat gear, I need to find something for that because I usually wear these, but they're saying nothing that'll soak through. So I need to find something. Otherwise, I'll put up the hood on my raincoat. So scrolling down again, REI is 12 hours. Okay, so that goes in my little piece of paperwork and it goes in my spray log. Uh, what is the reentry interval? 12 hours, stay out of there. Um, on consumer products, uh, you know, seven and the like, they generally just say, you know, don't touch it while it's still wet, and which is the common sense thing. But it's an active agent, certainly for 12 hours. It's doing its job. So 12-hour REI. Now, here is a nice thing why you read the entire label. It is unstable in an alkaline environment. So when you don't use copper in an acidic environment, carbaryl, you certainly don't want it to be in an alkaline environment. So you read it and you heat it. In this case, I'm going to consider putting in to neutralize my calcium. I will probably use acetic acid and be measuring the pH while I drop it. The, the acetic acid or citric acid, citric acid is supposed to tie up the calcium if I'm not getting the results I want, I'll just switch to Calgon again. But I certainly want to heed this because I'm investing in the tank. I do not want my water just making it trees wet. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking at 
palm fruit, which would include apple, palm, palm. What's in here? Okra. Come on, who wants to grow okra? Please. Where is it? Here we go. Palm fruit. So you can see all these little, there's an apple aphid, one and a half to three quarts per acre. So I work by percentages. So here's something you should understand. On U.S. labels, they talk about quantity per acre, not concentration. It really kind of bugs me. I would much rather have a concentration number there. But I think they're, you know, they're working for people. They're, they're providing information to people who don't want to crunch that. So they just say, I, I'm going to use so many, you know, I'm going to spread so much over so many acres, so I need to put so much in the tank. Uh, I have to work on concentration. So I convert that to a one and a half would be um, point zero something. Well, th well, let's put it this way. Three quarts per acre is a 0.75%. All right. So I work out as a percent, and then I put that into gallons at 128 fluid ounces per gallon. I take a percent of that times how many gallons, and I get how many fluid ounces I need to put in the tank. Um, that works for me. That works best for me. What works best for you? But know that those numbers are based on a 100 gallons per acre. Now, I know my friends who are doing um, air blast are down into 60 gallons per acre. So they know well enough to convert that. Okay. So if they know how long the tank will class, how many acres it's going to cover, they just put in that much material. They're not less driven by concentration. Okay. I am driven by concentration because I, I'm using a wand and I, that's it. I just don't want to be scorching my trees. So I really recommend that you write it down because when you're loading, you might be tired. And I have multiple products on here. I have Carbarel. I have Captan as an option at eight pounds per acre. Same PPE. I didn't put down the REI because I'm not going to go with it. I'm going to go back to Manze Pro Stick. It has an REI of 24 hours. I'm running it at a three pounds per acre, and I'm starting to just keep an eye on pre-harvest interval. All right. And the pre-harvest interval is how close to harvest can you use this that you can pick the fruit and sell it. And it's a 77 day. Captain, if I recall, has a zero day. So I'm like, well, I'll save that for later because you're always rotating your fungicide groups, okay? So this is it. Oh, and if you look at the stuff that Seven covers, remember there's you can get resistance, but it's a nice, affordable product. Yeah, there's Japanese beetle on there. There's uh, European sawfly. Now, in an IPM model, you don't you want to spray from when the pest is present. Well, the pests I have present certainly are the green apple aphid. I know I they're present, and I'm I haven't scouted for them yet. There's no lure for them yet, but I'm going to look for potato leaf hopper because that hopper burn really, really, really annoyed me. So this is just a um, a quick how, what's my how do I do what I do? Okay, so I do it ahead of time. I check my weather forecast. I look for when I'm going to have to spray, and then what I'll do is the tank is in the loading area on a on a dolly. Okay, I have an external power supply so I can run the circulating pump while I load it. And I will prep by putting out all the material, be in a row. My digital scale will be there. Um, I, I'm going to put up a little video about how I pour. It will all be in there. Actually, I might put on the end of this because it's relevant. I hope this all helps you because that's what I want to do. Please give me a thumbs up. Please tell your friends. Um, if you've subscribed, which I hope you have, please ring the bell and you'll get updates as I do things. A uh, quick side note, I just got back from getting the mail. And as I walked by, I was checking out the orchard. <clears throat> and what I noticed is that I've got clover and the like blossoming in the orchard. It's very pretty. That will not do. So one of the things I have to do and fit into my schedule is I have got to mow in the orchard before I spray because I do not want any blossoms at all in there
before I put down that carbaryl because I do not be drawing bees in. And there's always the chance of overspray at least onto the orchard floor. In fact, frankly, that's where most everything ends up. So I really want to encourage you as part of your orchard planning, stick your head out. Go do uh, ground truth it, take a look at it, and say, hey, do I have to mow? Now, in this case, I can mow that day and spray after sunset. So I, will, I don't even have to worry about them popping back up again. Hi, really short video to solve or to help with your pesticide handling. You know that if you're handling pesticide and you're loading, you're supposed to do it in an area where any spills are contained. And frankly, once it's on concrete or on the dirt, it's a mess to clean up. It's difficult. And having lots of uh, the, you know, the shop blotter things around, you still have to deal with those. The best thing is if it never hit the ground to begin with. I use a mortar mixing tub for measuring my pesticides. That way I'm pouring over something that if I do a dumb and I miss it, it hits that and I can still handle the material and it never got released into the environment, so to speak. Obviously, if I have to, you know, if I'm, if I'm loading that little container, which is usually weed killer, I can set it in there and then pour it from the one to the other. Don't have to worry about it. If I'm loading the tank on the tractor, well, then I have to just really be careful. Yeah. But like if I'm, well, yeah, that's it. You have to be careful. So I just wanted to throw this out. If you're loading pesticide, please be careful. Please do something to contain it. Because if you're like me, and let's say you're using a Roundup-like product like FarmWorks glyphosate, you're probably trying to save money and you're buying the two and a half gallon jug. Well, it's awkward. So work with it over one of these uh, mixing tubs. And then you have much less chance of dumping it on the ground or whatnot. Certainly, if you're using carbaryl, otherwise than known as seven, or an organophosphate or something like that, you don't want to be releasing that. You want to contain it. This is an affordable solution. Even if you have a bigger working area, who wants to deal with the mess? Use this. You know, so if you have an oops, it's small. It's in there. I mean, that entire two and a half gallon jug could leak out into there and it'd still be contained. So throwing you this one over the wall, consider it. And whatever you do, please have a great day and a good season. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.